Hey everybody, it is 2023. We're doing our very first from field to table. It is Sandhill Crane and Waterfowl on the menu. Here in Texas, we've already got the Super Black Eagle 3s warmed up. We've got our Federal Shotgun shells. Clients are here. We're gonna go get us some birds. We're going Sand Hill Crane hunting, I think about 45 minutes from here towards the Lubbock area. And we're gonna meet uh, this real famous guide up there, Justin. And it's, honestly, it's my first crane hunt. It'll be my first goose hunt. I've shot a duck before, but it wasn't great. <laughs> Let's go kill some flying fillets. We got all bodies accounted for. We're gonna go kill us some pterodactyls. Gotta get fuel at 5.30 in the morning. Got a fly in it. <laughs> no! So I have no idea where we are. <laughs> We're at way out in the middle of nowhere. We're in a dirt field, but it is time to go get set up on some sandhill cranes. We're gonna pull out the, uh, not the Benelli Lupos, <laughs> the Benelli Super Black Eagle 3s. We're, uh, we're gonna go set up some decoys and we're gonna go uh, set up our blind side, which will more likely be an A-frame. And some Federal ammo, and we'll go get us some pterodactyl uh, flying fillets and ribeye in the sky. And that's the only acronyms I know for them. We have to work for our dinner, I guess. So let's go have some fun. See ya. We can go get Oh, these are gonna get tucked back. Do I look like I know what I'm doing? I don't. That's the look I was going for. A little different than big game, huh? Community, and everybody gets to talk. <laughs> and you ain't, it don't make a difference how you smell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Been, Although some of us... I've been chasing maybe, white. Maybe it does matter how you smell. Been chasing white tail all over, <laughs> all over the country, and man, between sent away and mm. dead down wind, I'm tired of that. It's time to do Still some got one stick. waterfowl. <laughs> all right. You make you some earplugs? Yeah, I didn't bring any, so you had them. You take the seed. He's going. He's going to forget it was probably going to get some cotton seed mites. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> Yeah, SB3, anybody? Anybody? I there you go. I got an ethos too. I'll oh, turn it off. Anybody prefers that? What's that? Uh, that ethos. Anybody else? Anybody this else is Super Eagle. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I got a camo one too if you'd rather have camo. Oh, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Six and one. There you go. These are right here. 
Look at him with a quick draw. You don't have a big, That's big knife? Bad, yeah. it? It's an adequate knife. <laughs> See, look at there, Billy. Oh, yeah. See there? Look at him. I knew what was up. Yeah. There's some BBs. They should beware the flying plays. Okay, so I'll just have whoever's driving, I'll have you guys follow me out. Just stay in the same track, we'll drive all the way around, because he just drilled this with wheat, so. We'll drive all the way around and we'll park back where his tractors are. We've probably got about a total of uh, two cases of shells. I know you don't know how these guys shoot. Be Hank, we're good, or should I leave another one out? That, that should be enough, right. in theory. All right. There's 12 of us, 36, that's 500 shells. That, we, I mean, if we don't if we don't get them in 500 shells, uh, we need to quit. Well, there's no I can't do much for you. Golf might be an option. <laughs> Fishing. Yeah. Golf might yeah. be an option. If we if we shoot 500 times, it's been a good morning. That's right. <laughs> Talk about the flying play and the ribeye in the sky. So here's a breast, give you an idea how big a breast off of a sandhill crane is. And then there's the leg and, and thigh. I don't know what he has planned, but I can promise you that Chef Albert has something really, really good planned. Almost at a wrap for day one. Are we at day one? Yeah, I think I think we're at day one. Getting up at three o'clock in the morning. Or actually, I got up at like two fifty this morning. Man, it all kind of starts to run together. But today was yeah, it was actually uh, the first day to shoot. We did get up super early, but we got thirty cranes, uh, which got a three person, a three bird limit per person. Uh, there's we could have gotten maybe six more birds. They just quit flying. But anyway, 30 birds is a lot. So we got a lot of meat in the cooler already. And then today, whenever you're done around noon, it's like, okay, what else do you do the rest of the day? So most of the time we would take the clients and let them shoot on the wobble trap. Well, the battery on the wobble trap went dead. <laughs> so we couldn't shoot. Now it's time to go get some dinner 
go to bed, at, I don't know, like maybe seven o'clock and I'm sure we're getting up at three o'clock in the morning again. So awesome day one, day two starts tomorrow. We're doing this a little bit different. We're going to hunt over some water, but we don't need waders. That's what our guide told me. And we're meeting them at 7 a.m. Have you ever hunted waterfowl at 7 a.m.? Me neither. I don't know. I don't question the dude. Don't guide the guide is what they say. And I am far from a waterfowl expert, so I'm just along for the ride. Have y'all heard the expression, don't guide the guide? It's kind of what we're doing right now. It's uh, 7.30, you can see it's daylight out, and we're still following our guide to where we're gonna go hunt waterfowl. So, I don't know if this is a thing, I'm all about it. I just got over here just kind of being the last kid picked on the on the <laughs> on the on the football team or whatever. It's like I wonder why nobody got this spot here. Yeah, you're the fat kid leaning against the fence. Yeah. Nobody to I'm no the, team. Yeah, I'm the fat kid with glasses and braces. Mouth breather. <laughs> I'm the mouth breather. Mike brought the sunscreen. I got the beach balls, so we're good to go. <laughs> Gravity's stronger when you get older. <laughs> <laughs> We are all set up. We are doing something completely different. This morning is going to be geese. We're sitting over some water. It is now 8.30 and we haven't pulled a trigger yet. Oh, we're done. Squirrel. <laughs> it's 8.30. We haven't, we haven't even sat down yet. We got speckle bellies flying all over. So uh, as soon as JD gets back, we're going to get in our little, little chairs or little blind things and we're going to start shooting some birds. So don't all of you waterfowl experts be jealous. Camera. 
Oh, well, we went in there. <laughs> what do you think? That was uh, completely different than yesterday. Yesterday was all at once, it was all over. Today they just kept coming in, kept coming in. Ones and twos, the big groups, for whatever reason, we couldn't hit them. And the ones and twos, man, everybody just absolutely slayed them. But good time, we got another limit, a lot of fun. So now we got a little bit of variety for our to the table portion of the from field to table part of what we're doing. <laughs> everything um, all the ducks and the geese back in and so the guys are uh, pressing those out taking the livers and the hearts out and Mac and uh, Chef and I are cleaning them up we're going to eat lunch at about three o'clock in the afternoon and uh, come back and start doing some processing I think we'll make some sausage and some type of pate with the liver so sounds cool a real quick intro. I know I'll probably introduce himself to everybody, but uh, if you didn't, I'll just, I'll just give you a real quick history. So Albert and I actually met at the uh, Great American Outdoor Show in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, except I actually met his wife. I went to one of his demos years ago, like a long, long time ago. I had been sitting next to this lady and was watching. I was like, oh man, this guy's really good. She's like, yeah, he's pretty good. And she just talked long, and then he started talking. He was selling his uh, cookbooks. I was like, man, I'd love to get some of those cookbooks. She's like, I can probably get one signed for you and get some to you. I was like, oh, you know him? She's like, yeah, pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> so you're probably, you may have an opportunity to meet Miss Sandy. She's actually here as well. She's the sweetest lady in the world that you'll ever meet. But um, I know she didn't get you sleep last night, so she may still be, still may be uh, sleeping. But um, anyway, you all know that Albert is a chef. He's also an avid hunter, lives in Montana. Uh, does tons and tons of hunting, but what's cool about what he does with us is uh, not only is he a chef, he's also a culinary instructor. So he knows how to teach this really, really well. In fact, him and one of our other instructors, Cliff, work together at the Indiana Culinary Institute of Pennsylvania. Did I get that right? Close. Close? All right. Anyway, <laughs> at a cul culinary institute where uh, Albert uh, ended up being the director and had a handful, I don't know how many chefs you had under you, but 10. This minute. So he had, had 10 chefs, some of those chefs were teaching the students that wanted to come and learn how to be chefs. So you guys are in excellent hands. I have learned a ton over the last four years. Uh, I'm excited about learning as much from you as you do from me. And that's pretty much how it's gonna go. We're here to answer your questions. So we don't want you driving home saying, oh, I should ask this, I should ask that. Questions about anything, not just waterfowl. Basically, we're here to answer all of those questions and we're here to guide you through from the field to the table. So you got good quality meat from the field to the cutting board, from the cutting board to the table. So cooking is just like hunting. We're using all of our senses all the time. So we're listening to how it's cooking. We're tasting it. We're looking how much did it shrink on the bone. We're touching it. We're tasting it from the beginning to the end so that we know exactly what it's gonna taste like. And then our five course meal, basically what it's gonna be is, it's all gonna be prepped and it's gonna be like heat and serve. So everybody will be sitting around a big table tomorrow and Kelly and don't tell me, Skip, will come out and hold the plates and say, we're having duck wellington with an applejack brandy sauce with feta cheese and that'll be the first course. And then we'll bring all the plates that everybody will eat and then the next course will come up and I don't remember what it is, but you know, we'll come out and say, this is, this is what we're serving, and then we'll you know, explain what it is to the group. And uh, so, so we're gonna utilize all of the product, and we're gonna talk about anything from aging and temperatures and field care while we're doing all of this prep. So I get a sore throat by the end of the night because I never stop talking. All I do is walk the floor and talk and explain things. So uh, Kelly and Skip, you're doing Duck Wellington with the apples and the feta, which again, we will go over all of this. Uh, group two, Billy and Norm, you guys are doing the waterfowl liverwurst and the liver mousse with the spicy sweet mustard and creme fraiche, which uh, again, I'll explain all of this stuff, what it is. So Joey and Zay, 
you're gonna do uh, the waterfowl Mexican chorizo uh, street mm. tacos with dirty rice and guacamole. That, so that'll be the third course. So that course will be at 640 tomorrow. And then group four, Mike and Jason, you guys are doing the sous vide brine crane breast with the Madeira mushroom sauce, potato pancakes, green beans, oven roast, and tomatoes. You guys got a lot to do, but you also have a lot longer to do it because you know, you're not going out until 7 p.m. The dessert is making, the, or the lodge is making dessert. So this is what you would do tomorrow. This page is what you would do uh, as you're in your stations tomorrow. And we're gonna do a lot of this prep today. So, you know, you'll cross it off, you know. So put your names on these things. I mean, you, you don't need, everybody doesn't need to have one today. You could just have one on the table so that you could work off of it, but you're definitely gonna need them tomorrow. going to do is we're going to make sausages now. So we're going to make bratwurst, which are going to go into the casings, the natural casings. From there, we're going to make the kefta or the Moroccan kebab meat, which is going to be like a bulk sausage. And uh, it's equal parts crane and wild pig. So we're going, that, so that's a bulk sausage. And then from there, we're going to go to the chorizo. The reason for that is, is that we don't have to clean any of the equipment because the bratwurst is gonna be the mildest. It's kind of like making ice cream. You make vanilla first, then chocolate. So this is the mildest, and the chorizo will be the spiciest at the end. So uh, we'll use that one on the last. What's up everybody? It is cook day and I'm just sitting here at the range holding a 4570 Marlin Dark just because I wanted to look cool doing it and I wanted to do that. <laughs> so we're just goofing off. Ashley and I are actually down here uh, just having some fun on the range doing a little shooting on a very windy West Texas day. Uh, we did not go out in the field today. When I say we, I mean Ashley and I, because we did have to do some work uh, back here at the lodge. Everybody left out early this morning and probably about an hour to an hour and a half after daylight, I get a phone call, hey, we're getting ready to head back, we're done. <laughs> so they all limited out in about an hour, maybe just a little bit longer. So everybody is already back. They've been working out in the field, getting some geese, and now Chef is going to put them to work in the processing center Let's cruise over there, see what he's got going on for him. So here's the crane breast. This one was with the fascia removed, and this is with the fascia on it. And I wanted you to see it after it was brined because the fascia is more identifiable and it's a little easier to take off. But this is what makes it taste gamey and tough, makes it contort out of shape, and that makes it chewy. So I'm gonna show you how to take that off and then we're going to take this stuff over to the kitchen and we're going to go cook and eat again. Okay. What I'd like to do is to be totally done today by three. So you can take an hour break before we start over again in the kitchen on the, on the other menu. So come on over here and I'll show you how to take this apart. So what I, you know, so if this was a piece of venison loin 
or a, a shoulder clod off an elk or something or a piece of wild pig to get that off. Now, if I was gonna brine this and pickle it or braise this it's, or grind it, it's not necessary to take that off. But if I was gonna dry cook it, like we're going to tonight, like a dry cooking method, then I wanna take that off. So on, if when we ground up the thigh meat from the crane, we didn't take all this off. It, it's not necessary because of all the things that we're doing to it that's gonna alter the flavor. But on this, we don't, we don't want that. That's what makes it taste gamey, that right there is what makes any meat taste gamey. So if you go to the Duquesne Club, the number one city club in the country in Pittsburgh, when they serve venison or elk or anything, that has to come off. You know, and we buy venison for 27 buffaloes, tenderloin for $30 a pound. You know, so, uh, you know, they're getting a premium farm-raised animal, but that still has to come off. So how do we take it off? There's a couple different ways. You can just take the knife, go down this way, and just skin it like this. Or you can turn it like this and try to skin it like a fish. Come on. Like that. So that's what we want to try to get that fascia off of there. And when you brine it, that little bit of brine really brings it out. So on a turkey breast, you don't really see that. But after you brine it, it's real obvious. So that's what we want. If you think you got too much meat on there, you could always skin this. And or there are some people that will collect all of this with their bones and everything. And they'll use this in making stocks or the fancy name now is called bone broth. I don't know why, you know, that's the yuppie way of saying it, but it's basically stock. So people will use that for stock as well, as long as it's clean. If it, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to use anything dirty or messy, but that's, that's our injected crane breast. Remember we injected that with the brine and this is what we're going to put in that vacuum sealed bag. And then it's going to slow cook in that water. So when, with the sous vide, you want it to be vacuum sealed. You know, people will do it and get away with it in a Ziploc bag, but professionally speaking, it should be vacuum sealed when you put it in there for hours at a time. Okay, so that's gonna be our dinner. When we serve this tonight, we take it out of the sous vide. We'll set that temperature for three hours and we'll set it at say 120, 125, so it's still raw inside. And then we're gonna revert, we'll take it out, and then we're gonna have that cast iron pan and we're gonna sear the heck out of this and then let it rest. And then when we slice it, we're gonna slice it across the grain to go with our potato pancake and the other things that we're serving with it, okay? This is our sandwich. Yeah. 
just sriracha in the mayonnaise. The pickled vegetables along with that meat and that nice toasted bread. Mm. I'm not gonna have any room for dinner. That's delicious. <clears throat> so you'll need one of these at, per group. You don't need two, you know, two for two of you. Just one of these will work. So I'm just gonna quick go over the recipe or the, the menu with us. Six o'clock, we got group one, Kelly and Skip. Where's Skip? Oh, there you are. Oh, there's Kelly. And uh, Jenny's going to work with you guys. And you're going to make the duck wellington with the sautéed apples and feta cheese. The, so you're going to sear the meat. You know, so we want to get a smoking hot pan. And, you know, you, you pretty much got that process now. We want to caramelize it, but we want to keep it as rare as possible. And then while once the meat is cooling in the same pan, we're gonna remake our, what we call a duck cell. It's basically shallots and or onions and minced up mushroom and add some heavy cream and reduce that down till it's pretty dry, pasty. We'll take the duck and put some of that duck cell on top and bottom and we'll roll out this puff pastry which has lots of layers and uh, we'll wrap that with, and we'll have the seam side down. We'll brush it with egg wash, have it on a pan ready to go. It, it'll take 15 minutes to 20 minutes in the oven to get that dough fully cooked. By that time, the duck will be done. We take it out and let it rest. And we want to be done so that your first course is up at six. So I need to show everybody how to set up the station for service. And then we'll go over it. So at 545, that center island will be totally clear of everybody's work. That island will be cleared and then we'll do the first course. And then everybody's gonna go out and sit there and eat the first course. So you have to manage your time to remember you're gonna be eating, you know, you're not gonna be working in the kitchen on your entree while they're serving that course. The next course then will be at 620. So at 620, we're gonna have the liverwurst, which is already done, all you have to do. We'll have that all sliced, ready to go. And the liver mousse. So we, the first thing you need to do, of course, is cook that liver the liver and get that cooled. Then we bring all of our mise en place over to the food processor and we just wah, wah, you know, make a nice beautiful paste, light and fluffy in texture. What we're gonna make it flavorful is we're gonna add a cube of borsin cheese into that liver. So that's really gonna fluff it up and really flavorful and flavor, make it nice. Rather than adding a bunch of heavy cream and, uh, or cream cheese or things like that, we're gonna add that cheese to it. And then we, I made creme fraiche and I'll show you where that is. Creme fraiche is basically, it's like cultured like sour cream. So we just took one part buttermilk, one part sour cream, one part butter, uh, heavy cream, mixed together and left it out on the counter for two days. So it's nice and firm, it's got a nice twangy taste to it. And uh, that will go with the, uh, we'll put some chives in there, that'll go with the liver mousse and liver worst and the spicy mustard. And you guys are gonna work with Olivia cause she'll get the processor out on how to, how to set that thing up. So uh, group three, then Joey and Zay, you guys are, uh, gonna do the waterfowl Mexican chorizo street tacos. So we got little tortillas already made and you already got the chorizo done. I mean, all you have to do is cook it up and you'll basically, you can make the dirty rice, cook the chorizo, make the guacamole, make everything you had, have it all panned up. And then we got cilantro. We can add some diced tomato if you want, some sour cream. And, uh, you know, so you can alter these things and add to it to complement it. And then we'll talk about how are we gonna do this. So we're gonna heat these tortillas and then we're gonna do this and how are we gonna get them to stay on the plate so that they look good? Are we just gonna serve them out flat or how do we wanna do that? So we'll talk about that as you guys are working. And then uh, Mike and Jason, you guys are on the sous vide crane breast. So it's in the water right now. We just started it and it's in the bags in the, in the water. That's gonna cook for two hours. Then we're gonna take it out, pat it dry, season it, and then reverse sear it on in a cast iron pan. 
and then we'll set up that slicing station ready to go. So we want to work backwards. So if you're ready, if you're going to be up at seven o'clock, that has to be out of the water by six so we could get it dry, seasoned, and then revert, you know, seared and ready to go. You're going to do a, a it's called a cremini, it's, it's just mushrooms. It's like mini portobello mushrooms. And we're going to quarter them and saute them. And then we're going to add some Madeira wine and some brown sauce to it and let that simmer all night long on the back burner. In the meantime, I cooked it the other day, the first day, that was yesterday, I baked some potatoes with the jackets on them. And now we're just gonna peel the jackets, mince up some onion and mix some egg and maybe some matzah or panko breadcrumbs and grate the potato and make little round potato pancakes. And then we're gonna pan fry them. Pan fry them, we can get that done now and then pan them up and then all we do is throw them in a 400, 500 degree oven and heat them up when it's time to serve. The baby green beans, we don't have green beans. We got snap peas because they didn't have any. So uh, we got snap peas. We're gonna blanch them in some boiling water and then take them out, shock them in ice water. That sets the chlorophyll so they're really nice and green. We hold them, we'll put pan them up, put some butter seasoning on them. When it's time, we throw them in the oven and we can cook them forever. They're not gonna lose their color because we shocked that chlorophyll with the ice water. We stopped that cooking process. The oven roasted tomatoes, the same thing. We're just gonna core the tomato out, cut the top off, take some breadcrumbs, mix it with some herbs and some butter, top it with breadcrumbs and garlic, and the same thing, bake them, take them out, and let them rest. And when it's time to serve, the sauce is boiling on the back. We throw the pancakes in the oven, we throw the green beans in the oven, we throw the tomatoes in the oven, and while they're heating up, we're slicing the meat. All the plates are ready to go and out it goes. So we can serve it in no time. So we are all done. We finished our very first Field to Table 2023. Everybody had a great time. I had a blast. Pretty sure Ashley had some fun. She got some first, which was really cool. Mac always has fun. And we are heading off to the Spur Ranch where we're going to have a major announcement for you guys. I'm super excited about it. We're going to go shoot some guns, have some fun, and we will fill you in on what we're doing next.